welcome to Vlogmas Day 4. Today is Friday, December 15th. My name is Teresa Koga and I'm so happy you're here with me today. We're going to start out with the comments. I loved hearing all, all about your songs that you love and uh, in a little bit later I'm going to insert a little clip where Mr. Wims joined me today and he answered the past, you know, all three Christmas. He must have missed one. Oops, that's my fault. But anyways, um, we are, oh, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. Sorry. I'm sorry. I got, I got lost in my place. I don't know what I was talking about now. So uh, today though, the uh, reading for the speed painting video is so good. There were a lot of parts of the book this time I'm starting to kind of go through it and, and not read everything because there's no way I can read this entire book. But I'm reading things that are pertinent to, you'll see where the changes came down the pike, type of, so to speak, over time. And where the uh, traditions came from and the stories and the... Anyway, it's getting very interesting. I mean, the whole thing to me has been interesting, but, uh, and I, you know, a lot of these words, I don't know if I'm even saying them right. Uh, I was called out on, <laughs> I was saying Chiro and it's Cairo for the X with the P going through it, the first two letters of Christ in the Greek alphabet. So I appreciate those corrections. Some of them are like so complicated that I pause my, my voiceover and I look the word up, the pronunciation up online and have it say it. You know, you can push that, push that little, um, the little speaker there and <laughs> that's been helpful, but oh, some of these words are killing me and I'm not the best reader I've discovered. And uh, anyway, interesting. I said to Kevin last night, I'm like, you know, it makes me feel like I need to read more often and read out loud just to get better at it. Cause I'm like, wow, I don't kind of stink at this, but <laughs> anyways, so I mispronounced Cairo. I also thought it was interesting cause someone brought up the, another very, uh, popular or not popular, but well-known and it goes way back in history. Uh, one of the, what is it called? The Chris Chrismans. The Chrismans are like basically monograms for Christ. So I printed, or I, I went to a website that had some of them. I'm gonna pop them up here. I'm gonna actually pop them up here as I talk about just some of them. I'm not going through all of them. The IHS, I've seen that before. I didn't know what that meant. So it says IHS are the first three letters of Jesus in Greek. This has been used to represent Jesus from the third century. From the middle ages, they also were used in the Latin phrase, Jesus hom hominum salvator, which means Jesus, savior of men. And in, and in England, oh my Lanta, see, I can't read. And in English, they can mean in his service. And then the fish symbol is one of the oldest Christian symbols. The letters from the Greek word for fish stands for Jesus, fisher of men. I know that's what it means. Okay, and then I love this symbol. This is the alpha and omega. It's the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet used together. They are the sim they are the symbolize. I think that's written wrong. They are to symbolize that Christians believe Jesus is the beginning and the end of all things. Cairo is the next one, but we already went over that one. Then we have the Star of David, sometimes called the Star of Creation, is a symbol that Jesus was a Jew and a descendant of King David. The five-pointed star, which I put in a lot of my, my work. <laughs> I love stars. Uh, the five-pointed star represents the five wounds of Jesus on the cross. The nativity star is the symbol of the Star of Bethlehem or Epiphany when the wise men visited Jesus. The eight-pointed star represents baptism and regeneration. The crown is the symbol that Jesus is king. It shows that Christians believe Jesus is ruler over heaven and earth. I love this symbol too. The symbol represents the Christian trinity of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. 
Love that. And then the dove is the symbol of peace and the Holy Spirit. It is showing pointing down to represent the Holy Spirit that appeared as a dove when Jesus was baptized. And the last but not least, and like I said, there's more, but these are the most common or the, the most well-known. I guess that's the most common. <sighs> okay. <laughs> the keys are a symbol for the church in all the world. Jesus told his friend Peter that I will give you the keys to heaven. So this means that Christians have to tell other people about Jesus. Beautiful. I love it. Okay. So I wanted to go over that real quick. I don't think there's anything else as far as just, oh, this, this, the reading though. It's really good. The giveaway winner. Bam. <laughs> I already forgot. The winner is Jack and Bonnie Brewer. Five, four, four. And I don't have it printed off. I know it was Holy Night. Holy Night was their first one, but it's up here. It's a short comment. You can read it yourself. Okay, so today's giveaway question is... Are you an early shopper or are you a last minute shopper? I have a friend that she used to get all of her Christmas shopping done. I swear it was like by Halloween. I know it was way before Thanksgiving, so that's why I was thinking Halloween. Yeah, she was amazing. She might have to pick up a little tiny thing here or there, but she would have it wrapped and ready to go. The minute she decorated her house and put her tree up after Thanksgiving, she had all of her presents ready to go. I was like, oh, and I don't know if she still does it that way, but probably she's very organized. Kevin and I took a Friday off a couple weeks, or no, it was last Friday we took off and went shopping. And, you know, we got a lot done, but like when the kids were little, it was easy. Go to the toy store, you're all set, you know. But now the kids are older. Um, I asked Brianna last night, I need some ideas for you and Eric, and she goes, we don't need anything. He goes, but I'm going to buy you something, so you might as well give me some ideas. Don't make it like I wanted to say, ah, like, please, please, please give me ideas, because otherwise I'm racking my brain, I'm looking online, I'm spending all of this time. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. Hopefully whatever we get them, they like it. So your keyword is going to be shopper. Like, what kind of shopper are you? And you could even just start out, because it's kind of weird to use that in a sentence. You could just say put shopper and then I want you to tell me though why do you wait to the last minute or wh how do you manage to get it done early I want to know especially that <laughs> here is what we are giving away for this next one so tomorrow I will tell you who wins this little ornament this is an ornament it says right even right there it says Kurt Adler so you've probably heard of him he has amazing um, ornaments and I was licensed with him this is several years old and it's so stinking cute and I don't even have these I didn't even save any for my tree so you're really lucky to get this because I'd like to keep it myself I'll read what it says on there it says not okay so it's hold the angels holding three birds and it says not only I'm sorry I got to get it in the light Oh no, not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Matthew 10, 29 through 31. Doesn't that give you the warm feels? It's like, yes, God's got our back. So, okay. I do believe that is it. So... Thanks again for joining me, and I'll insert that clip with Mr. Wims, and then we'll go into the speed painting and the story for today. So thanks again, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Look who we have here. Hi there. Mr. Wims is with us How today. Are we doing? He's got a little catching up to do. Yeah. So. What's what's new? I've been playing catch up for the last two weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's been crazy. So he needs to answer a couple questions before today's. Uh, Mr. Wims, what is your favorite childhood Christmas memory? Oh, it have to be oh, when I was young. We, the family Christmases on my mom's side and then on my dad's side, we were both 
pretty pretty big. But going to my Aunt Wanda and Uncle Ed's on Christmas Day and, you know, just running around with all my cousins and hanging out and just being a child again. And then my, my mom's family side was really big that we had to rent a hall. It was just almost 100 people and lots and lots of cousins. And Santa would come and lots of presents. Cool. What is your favorite Christmas treat? Treat. Treat. Oh, you, Teresa. Oh, isn't that sweet? Uh, my mom used to make uh, these cookies, I guess they're cookies, they're called church windows. They're tiny little uh, different colored marshmallows kind of in, somehow encased in chocolate. I printed off a picture because I had never heard of them before. I might even make some this year. A little coconut in there. They were good. Coconut, Very different. chocolate, and nuts. I'm not crazy about marshmallows, but I can overlook that for chocolate, nuts, and coconut. coconut. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> and pumpkin pie is always a favorite. I don't care if it's Christmas, Easter, or birthday. my birthday. Yep. All right, so today, let's see, they answer, like, I give them a question for a giveaway. So yesterday's question, I answer today. So today's question is, what is your favorite Christmas song? And... Mine, I, I have a lot of them. I love a lot of most of the Christmas music, most all of the old stuff. But uh, we were at our, I think it was Ryan's Christmas concert, and they were all dressed in all the kids were dressed in black, and they had white gloves on, and they were doing uh, a mime to Silent Night. And I'll get the goosebumps when I think about it. And when it came to the part where they said fall on your knees, they all just fell forward on their knees, like in perfect synchronicity. And I mean, I got the goosebumps thinking about it and I just started crying like a big old baby. But it was just because the music was loud and it was a silent night, like nobody was making a peep. And that song blaring and when they did that, it was whew, amazing. How about you? Oh, uh, well, the earliest memory of favorite Christmas song I have would be probably a little drum, little drummer boy. Um, I was the lead in a kindergarten play. Aww. Yeah, I, Can I, you I, imagine little Kevin? <laughs> I remember very little, but I do remember that. It was in a three-room schoolhouse, and our class was in the basement. Was, How old I think it was are old you? Church. Um, I'm just kidding. Ancient. <laughs> and then you know, there's there's lots of other ones. Oh yeah. Blue Christmas and. Was that baby? It's cold outside. Oh, I love that one. Yes. White it Christmas. So many good ones. Yeah, I'm not crazy about the, the current, the redos. Not I've been learning the new Christmas song. Yes, you have. For the Tom Petty tribute. Yeah. Um, Let's hear a little. Oh no, singing. I'm trying to think of the name of it. <laughs> it's Christmas time again. Yeah. Yes. It's Christmas time. Again. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> um, the one I like that is actually kind of a newer one, or maybe it's an old one and I just never heard of it. But um, what is it? Mary, did you know? Oh my gosh, the first time I heard that, again, tears. You know which one that is? Yeah, it sounds familiar. The, yeah, someday he'd walk on water. and I mean, oh. Yeah. So... We're caught up. That's it. That was good. That's all there was to it. Yep. Pretty nothing, simple. Nothing to it. We are doing the Newlywed game. I think Monday will be that one. What could possibly go wrong? Unless you have band practice or something like that. But we're mm -hmm. kind of shooting for Monday. And that should, that should be kind of hilarious. And embarrassing probably too. But we're used to that from the Jingle Balls. So. on it. <laughs> all right. Thanks, babe. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Nicholas faithfully shepherded the flock in Myra for many years, as was written of Simon of the high priest in the 2nd century BC, so it could be said of Nicholas. He was as the morning star in the midst of a cloud, and as the moon at the full, as the sun shining upon the temple of the Most High God, and as lilies by the river of the waters, and as precious myrrh making all fragrant all his life. Bishop Nicholas died on December 6, 343 A.D. 
His last words were from Psalms 11. In the Lord I put my trust. At his burial, the bishops of Lycia gathered all the clergy and monastics and a countless multitude of people from all cities. His body was laid with honor in the cathedral church of the Diocese of Myra. Stories of the life and acts of Nicholas spread throughout Turkey into Greece and throughout the Roman Empire. Many legends of miracles arose regarding him, but it was the tradition of secret gift giving on the anniversary of his death that became the most popular. The earliest discussion of the date of the nativity is in the writings of Clement of Alexandria, 150 to 215 AD. The tradition was that the angel Gabriel appeared to Zacharias, telling him his wife would become pregnant while he was in the temple for the Day of Atonement, which would have been in September. His wife, Elizabeth, was six months pregnant with John the Baptist when Mary visited her, which would make the date of the Annunciation when Gabriel appeared to Mary and she conceived by the Holy Spirit around March 25th. Nine months later would therefore be the day of Jesus' birth, December 25th. In 354 AD, just 40 years after Constantine ended the persecution of Christians, Pope Liberius led a successful effort to end the worship of Roman Saturn, the god of the unconquered sun. In order to celebrate the superiority of Christianity over paganism, Pope Liberius replaced the pagan day with the worship of the true unconquered Son of God, Jesus Christ. The word Christmas comes from Christ's Mass, or the Mass of Christ, which means the celebration of the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. On December 20th, 386 A.D., St. John Chrysostom preached the first known Christmas sermon in the city of Antioch, it was titled Homily on Christmas Morning. The Emperor Justinian built a church in the year 430 AD, a suburb of Constantinople, and named it for St. Nicholas. On Christmas Day in the year of 496 AD, Clovis, the King of Franks, along with 3,000 of his warriors, converted to Christianity and were baptized by St. Reginus of Reims, France. The name Clovis came to be pronounced Louis, which was the name of the 22 French kings. The Council of Tours in the year 567 AD tried to reconcile the controversy between the Eastern Church and the Western Church. Christmas Day, December 25th, recognizing Christ's birth, was remembered in Western Europe as the holiest day of the season. And Epiphany, January 6th, recognizing the visit of the wise men and Jesus' baptism, was remembered in Eastern Europe. Since no agreement could be reached as to which day was holier, the decision to make all 12 days between December 25th and January 6th holy days, or as it was later pronounced, holidays, these became known as the 12 days of Christmas. Christmas Traditions In Belgium, St. Nicholas was thought to come from the celestial city in heaven on his feast day, riding a white horse, carrying a book in which the guardian angels had carefully recorded each child's deeds. He would then reward the good children with sweets and punish the wicked with switches, similar to when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven on a white horse to reward every man according to his works. In Germany, St. Nicholas is called Vanachman and is said to visit homes on the eve of the feast day. He is accompanied by Krampus, an ugly, chain-rattled little devil who deals with children who have been naughty. The anticipation of this visit brought children and anxiety akin to the Day of Judgment. In France, St. Nicholas is called Pierre Noel. Children would leave their slippers and wooden shoes on their doorsteps, filled with oats to feed the camels of the three wise men. The next morning, they discovered their kindness rewarded as their shoes were filled with sugared plums. 
in Denmark, a superstitious tradition that continued from their pagan history was a Nessie. This was a small gnome-like creature referred to as an elf or sprite, which lived in their house or barn. It had a long white beard, wore a red cap, and was given to mischief. It was customary for the family to leave out a plate of porridge on Christmas Eve to appease the spirit so it would not cause grief similar to having a treat at Halloween so they would not get tricked. In the Netherlands, St. Nicholas is called Sinterklaas. He arrives in Holland on a boat from Spain, dressed in a bishop's robes and carrying a pastoral staff. He rides a white horse across the rooftops with his costume helper, checking on the children. The good children received gifts while the naughty children were threatened with being put in a gunny sack by his little helper and taken back to Spain where they would be sold to the Muslim slavery. Often children would be brought to tears when reminded of St. Nicholas's imminent visit. When the Reformation began in Germany, 1517 AD, Martin Luther ended all praying to or honoring of saints, including St. Nicholas, believing that Christ alone should be the focus of attention. People liked the gift giving, so Martin Luther sought to refocus the people's thoughts on the Christ child, which in Old German was pronounced Christkindl, later pronounced Chris Kringle. He taught Christ was the giver of all gifts, and our gift giving should be in remembrance of the great gifts Christ gave us.